Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to make some gingerbread trees. We are going to use the Blitz and the Holly Lane mold and some IOD air dry clay. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your IOD and Dixie Bell needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Let's get started. Today I'm using these paper mache trees that I found at one of those big box stores and I am going to be painting a coat of Dixie Bell's pumpkin spice chalk mineral paint on the base of two of them. I'm then going to be using IOD's air dry clay in the blitz mold to cast a bunch of snowflakes. I'm going to do all of the snowflakes except for the larger one. I want to be able to use a bunch of them on the trees and that large one is just a bit too big. Usually I would use amazing casting resin for this but I want to cast quite a few and my resin supplies are running a bit low with all the crafting I've been doing so we're using clay today. Now when you're doing the snowflakes it is really important to use that cornstarch. It's really going to make sure that your castings come out relatively easily. I do find it harder to get good detail using clay in this mold but it's still very very cute and it'll definitely work for our project today. Once I have my snowflakes cast, I'm going to be attaching them with a strong wood glue. Now I'm just going to have to have a bit of a play as I'm applying them to work out how I want my snowflakes to sit. There's going to be gaps in between and I just want to get as close a fit as possible so that the gaps aren't too wide. So I've just put my paint there to help stabilize my tree as it wanted to go for a bit of a roll there. Um, and I'm just gluing down each of the snowflakes Obviously we're dealing with a curved surface here, so I'm being gentle and wrapping and pressing the snowflakes around my surface. I suggest having some wet wipes handy to clean off your hands while you're doing this as mine got really, really sticky from all the glue and dealing with the clay. So definitely a good idea to have some of those on standby. So if you're going to try this project, it really is up to you how many snowflakes you add, how you space them out. You could give them a lot more space in between. It's really down to the look that you're after. Remember to be a bit gentle as you're pressing your snowflakes down so that you don't damage any of the details. In certain areas, I did actually cut the snowflake in half to fit down the bottom. Now I'm sure you probably noticed that not all of my snowflakes were perfect. Some of them had the clay that stuck in the mold a little bit, but I wasn't going for a perfect look here. This is just a, a fun project, so try not to stress over the fact that the snowflakes may not come out perfect. Once I have all the snowflakes glued down, I'm going to let this sit for 24 hours before I start painting. I'm just a bit worried that using the paint, I will damage the details that are already a little bit fragile anyway. So I'll give it that time to set up so that when I paint it, I don't damage them. Next, we're going to start work on the other tree. I'm going to use the Holly Lane mold and I'm going to cast the smaller elements from the mold and I'm going to make enough to cover the tree. Now there are going to be gaps here again, but that's okay. We're still gonna try and get somewhat of a tight fit with minimal gaps. 
So again, you can see here that I'm working that clay into the mold, rubbing my thumb against the micro rim, and then flipping the mold over and using gravity to help me get that mold out. Once I have all my holly bits and pieces ready, I'm using that strong wood glue again and applying it generously to the back and then positioning it onto my little tree. Again, I'm gently bending and curving the castings around the tree and anywhere where I feel like there needs to be a little bit of excess glue, I'm adding that and gently pressing down. I'm not worried if excess glue comes out either side of the castings because this glue dries clear. After you press the mold down, you can see here that I was able to shift it a little bit into a slightly different position, but I wouldn't recommend moving it once it's been sitting on the surface for a minute or so because it does tend to bond pretty quickly. And I found that if I tried to move it, that it actually ripped the mold as I was pulling it away. So definitely pick your position and make sure you're happy with it pretty quickly. I didn't really have much of a plan in terms of layout and how I was going to sit the moulds. So you can see I'm just experimenting and playing and working out what's going to fit where. And really it is up to you if you're going to do this project. It's up to you how much space you're going to leave in between and what moulds you want to put where. Just don't be afraid to have a bit of a play and see which composition feels right for you. Anywhere that my holly leaves overlapped the bottom, I just gently bent and pulled the excess off. I found that as I got closer to the top that I was reaching for the smaller castings from the Holly Lane mold to fill in the spaces. So maybe keep this in mind as you're working on your composition that you'll need some smaller pieces for the top. Once I was finished with this tree, I also sat it to one side and let it dry for 24 hours before coming in to paint. Next, I'm using Dixie Belle's Pumpkin Spice Limited Edition Full Color. This is a chalk paint, so it sticks really well and it's nice and thick. I found myself loading my brush up a little bit more than I usually would, just so that I didn't have to be too rough with applying my paint. I found that if I added a bit of extra and then gently dabbed and stippled the paint and spread it, I just found that that was less harsh on my molds because these are still going to be fragile, especially as some of the little pieces I found did sort of stick out just a little bit, but overall I was pretty happy with how this turned out. Next I'm adding the white gingerbread details. I'm using a small artist brush with the color fluff and I am adding it to the snowflakes. I am just running my brush over the details. I found that if I laid my brush at a bit more of a flat angle that it really only caught the high points and the details that I was trying to hit anyway. So that definitely made the job a little bit easier. So I'll work my way around and add all the details to the different snowflakes. There's a lot of snowflakes and a lot of details. So I did speed up the footage for you here, guys. Otherwise we would be here for a long time, but definitely get yourself a small artist brush for this job if you're going to give it a go yourself. It definitely makes your life a lot easier.
Next, I'm going to set that to one side and I'm going to focus on the holly tree. Now I'm adding the white to the holly berries and then I am running my brush along the edges of the leaves and in the crevices and just catching the high points. We are going to be using a little bit more white, but I thought that this really reminded me a lot of icing sugar and, and the dusting that we do to a lot of our lovely Christmas treats. So that's the look I was going for here. And again, I've sped it up. There's a lot of details to do here. I decided to add a little bit of sparkle so I'm using boil spray adhesive and I am spraying my dry trees well with the adhesive. This is going to help my glitter to stick well. I'm then sprinkling on some white shimmery glitter over both trees. And here are the finished gingerbread trees. This project was a lot of fun and it really, honestly, I think looks like real gingerbread. Let me know what you guys think of this project in the comments. Do you have a favorite out of the trees? If you liked today's project, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that like button. And if you're not already, I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our Christmas crafts or furniture makeovers. You can find all of the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.